Welcome to AC 101. In this segment, we will discuss the following topics. Theory of operation, which is heat transfer, high and low side of the system, and the layout and design of both the dryer expansion valve system and the orifice tube accumulator system. Let's get started. Before we go under the hood to see why the system's not working correctly, let's review what an air conditioning system actually does. What we're looking for is we're looking for heat transfer. We want to take the heat from inside the cab of the truck and transfer it away from the truck. The driver's main concern is that cool air is blowing on him. He doesn't really care how the system works. He just wants to make sure that cool air is making him comfortable. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that heat and we're going to force it through an evaporator, which is down under the dash. And we're going to take that heat and throw it out through the condenser, which is located in the front of the truck. That's heat transfer. We cannot make cold. All we can do is transfer heat. If I were to take a little plastic tray with these little holes in it, fill with water, put it in my freezer, and then come back in a couple hours, I would now find little ice cubes. Now, did I make that water cold? No. What I did was I took the heat from inside that water and transferred it out through the back of the freezer. If you put your hand behind the freezer, you'll feel the warm air coming out. Of it. That was the heat that was in the ice cubes. Now, taking that same theory, we're going to use the evaporator on the truck. We're going to take a fan and actually force air across it, the warm, hot air inside the truck, and we're going to transfer that through the front of the condenser of the truck. Now, there's five major components in an air conditioning system, and fortunately, each one of their names tells you what they do. The compressor's main job is to raise pressure and temperature of the refrigerant. From this point on, I want you to think of that compressor as a motor. It's got pistons, rods, crankshaft, it needs lubrication, and it needs a cooling system. If we understand it as a motor, we can appreciate better its function. Again, all it's, all it's doing is taking the refrigerant from, into a, from a gas, low pressure to a high pressure gas. The next component is the condenser. This is located in the front of the truck. Its job is to change that refrigerant from a high temperature, high pressure gas into a high pressure liquid. From this point on, we're going to be seeing the refrigerant going to our dryer. Our receiver dryer, which again is your filtering system for your air conditioning system. This not only removes particles from the system, but also removes moisture, and that's very important, which we'll discuss later. From the dryer, we go to the expansion valve. The expansion valve can be a block valve or it can be one with capillary tubes. Both of them work the same. The job of the expansion valve is to take this high temperature, high pressure liquid and turn it into a low temperature, low pressure liquid. There's a needle valve that in the wide open positions about eight thousandths of an inch, totally closed is still open about two thousandths of an inch. But for a moment as a refrigerant passes through that orifice, it'll drop to almost 20 degrees below zero. That's one point that you don't want to have moisture. If you have moisture at that point, it doesn't take a drop of water very long to freeze at 20 below zero. Now going into the evaporator, we have that low pressure, low temperature, very cold refrigerant. And again, evaporator as its name implies, if I were to take rubbing alcohol and pour it on the back of my hand, all of a sudden it'd feel very cold. Why is that? Because I'm turning a liquid back into a gas. The process of turning a liquid into a gas absorbs heat, and that's exactly what our evaporator does. As that refrigerant goes through, it absorbs the heat that we're forcing through with a fan. It now turns into a gas, and from this point, the line goes back to the compressor where it can be recompressed again and the system starts over. Let's discuss our orifice tube accumulator system. Our compressor, as we talked about before, we want to think of it as a motor. It has pistons, rods, crankshaft in it, it needs a lubrication system, and it needs a cooling system. There's two lines coming in, one in and one out. The line coming in will be your larger line, that'll be your suction side line. That should be sweating back like a glass of iced tea. What the compressor does, it takes that low pressure, low temperature gas, and it compresses it into a high pressure, high temperature gas. From that point on, 
it goes out the discharge line, which is the smaller of the two lines, and it'll be very hot to the touch. So it's very normal for one side to be sweating, and it's very normal for the other one to be very, very hot. From the point of leaving the compressor, the line goes to the top of the condenser. The job of the condenser, as its name implies, we're gonna condense this gas into a liquid. When it comes in, it's like a radiator system. It'll take and it'll drop the temperature of that fluid. It'll start in as a gas, it'll come out as a liquid. You'll lose somewhere between 16 and 26 degrees. If you take your temperature gun, shoot the line coming in and going out, and you see a 10 or so or 15, maybe even 26 degree drop, that's very normal. If you see it freezing up, if you see frost on your condenser, then you know you have a restriction at that point, and that's one place you need to check. Leaving the condenser, we go to our clutch cycling orifice tube, or CCOT tube. It's a little tube about the size of my little finger, stuck inside of a tube, leading directly into the evaporator. It changes that high temperature, high pressure liquid into a low temperature, low pressure liquid. At one point in time, it's 20 degrees below zero. Being that it's a piece of plastic, it's very vulnerable to cracking or splitting. Often this will split and it'll cause refrigerant to flood into the evaporator and you'll get a frozen up evaporator because of it. It is also the only screen in the system. That is the only filtering in that system. And that screen that's on the end of it tends to plug up quickly, which will cause your system to freeze up. From the CCOT tube, we go to our evaporator. It's going to be a low pressure, low temperature liquid. At that point, it's going to be pouring a lot of refrigerant into that evaporator. Unlike our expansion valve system, it's more than the evaporator can handle. It will do a good job of removing the heat and transferring it into the refrigerant, but often coming out of the evaporator, we still have liquid. Remember, we cannot compress a liquid. If we were to take that liquid straight into the compressor, we would lock up our compressor. In the orifice tube system, the line leaving the evaporator is going to be a low temperature, low pressure, still with some liquid in it. We cannot compress a liquid. So we need to put it in a system where that liquid can be allowed to evaporate. So we put it into what is called an accumulator. The accumulator is an aluminum cylinder. And in this aluminum cylinder, the liquid refrigerant falls into it lays at the bottom and slowly evaporates. As it evaporates, it is drawn in through a tube at the top of the accumulator where it goes into the compressor as a gas. Both the receiver dryer and the expansion valve system and the CCOT accumulator system are controlled by switches. We have high pressure switches, which keep the refrigerant from going too high and causing failure. We have low pressure switches that do not allow the system to come on if there's not an adequate amount of refrigerant. We also have switches that control the clutch fan on the fan by the radiator to tell it to come on and to go off. And we have a thermostatic switch up in the dash, which will tell the system and the driver can be set so that he knows how cool or how warm he would like to have the system run. So these will we be testing in a later segment.